Hello everyone, I am CA Preeti Agarwal and this time we are going to revise CA Inter Law with a twist. I am going to highlight all the keywords, sentences, phrases which have to be present in your answer if you want to score good marks in corporate and other laws. In these revision lectures, we are not only going to highlight the keyword sentences, but we are also trying, we will also try to learn those keywords with the help of mnemonics, easy to remember charts. I will make you write small notes which will help you in last minute revision. It is going to be a quick, rapid revision of keyword sentences. I will also highlight the important sections for exam the type of questions that can be asked on a particular section which part is important for case based question mcq questions case based mcq all those hints will be provided to you in the lecture itself so do subscribe to my channel ca preeti agarwal and also visit my website ca preeti agarwal.com for these notes All right, guys, let's get started. Now, the first chapter is the preliminary chapter, which covers all the definitions. Is it important for exam? Yes, of course, you need to write the definitions in your answer. And I will also make you highlight the most frequently asked definitions from this chapter. Okay, so you need to learn those definitions. You need to pay extra attention to those definitions. Now, I'm uh, referring my uh, textbook for CA Inter Law. You can find this textbook on my website capreetiagarwal.com. So do visit and make this textbook yours. Now, uh, while going through uh, the, uh, these revision lectures, I would want you to keep a highlighter, preferably two color highlighter with you so that we can highlight all the keywords. I will also need two color pens, one blue and uh, you can use one red pen so that we highlight the uh, important provisions and also take, take down last minute revision notes. Okay, so please keep two markers and two color pens with you while watching these lectures. Okay, so the first chapter is the preliminary chapter. These are all the definitions. Uh, will the question be asked on this introduction part? Not at all. This is generally give you an introduction of the companies at and I think at this stage you are already aware of the total sections, the chapters in this, uh, uh, in this act and what is the long title, short title. I don't think we need to discuss uh, the basics of a company you are already aware of the characteristics of the company that was also covered in ca foundation so let us now directly jump to the main part from this chapter now what you need to learn yes you need to learn the definition of a company why ma'am will a question be asked on such basic level no sometimes if a if it is a very basic question in that case you may be expected to write the definition of a company you don't have to write the definition for each and every answer, okay? But yes, you should know this definition along with the section number. So in this case, we will highlight the entire definition because it is important for exam. So section 2 clause 20 defines company. Now, how is a company defined? Company means a company which is incorporated under this act or any other previous company law. So how will we make notes for last minute revision? So you will write, Company means a company which is incorporated. So we will say incorporated under this act or any previous company law. So this is how you will remember under this act. So TA is this act previous company law PCL. Now this will be used many times later also. So there we will use the same short form so that you, you easily you are able to identify the meaning of these words. So it means the company incorporated under this act or any previous company law. Now, what does it mean? It means that if your company is incorporated under this act, obviously the companies act 2013 will apply, but the act also applies to companies which are incorporated under any previous company law like 1956, 1913, 1866, etc. So they cannot argue that we were incorporated prior to 2013. So the 1956 act will apply to us. No, if the word company is mentioned in the act, it includes all the companies, whether incorporated under this act or any previous company law. So you need to memorize the definition. Other things you can ignore. Okay. What is the extent? It extends to the whole of India. Uh, section 1 commenced immediately. All right. Now, applicability may be asked as a case based question okay it may be asked i'm not very sure because it's a very basic concept and uh, generally they don't ask questions uh, which are, which require you to apply uh, such basic things okay now 
Applicability, yes, I will give you a very easy way to remember the applicability part. The provisions of this act shall apply to companies again incorporated under this act or under previous company law. So let's start making notes. Okay. Now, when I was a student, I would use the left margin to write keywords, phrases, certain important points. And I used to keep reading the words which I would write in the left margin. And those became my keywords as well as last minute revision notes. So I'm going to use that same technique with you. It has worked for me. I hope it works for you also. Now, it includes companies, let's say, let's write over your companies incorporated under this act or previous company law. So this is how we will be able to recall the concept one day before the exam. Okay, now this act also applies to certain other sectors like the insurance sector, electricity, banking sector. So it applies to, yes, it also applies to insurance companies. So we will make take down note. It applies to insurance companies. It applies to banking companies. Okay, it applies to banking companies. It applies to companies engaged in the generation of electricity. So it applies to electricity company. It applies to companies which are governed by special act. Let us go on highlighting those keywords now. So in the exam, yes, you're supposed to remember the definition, the, the uh, provision as it is, but I know it is difficult for you to memorize things. So what we will do is we will highlight the keywords. Those words have to be mentioned in your answer. The remaining words, you can write it in your own words. Okay, So the, the sentence can be framed in your own words, provided you write these keywords in your answer. So it includes insurance companies. It includes banking companies. It includes companies which are engaged in the generation or supply of electricity you're either generating or you're just supplying electricity it includes other companies which are governed by special act for the time being enforced okay so can i write over here it includes other companies which are governed by special act see spl is special act okay so examples include sbi rbi lic i will explain it but first let us highlight the key points such body corporate we are going to learn the definition also of a body corporate it includes such body corporate which is incorporated in any act for the time being in force as notified by central government okay so this is how we will remember applicability that is covered in section one okay now it applies to insurance other sectors also which includes insurance companies banking companies electricity company but if there is any inconsistency now these are companies which are governed by their respective acts if there is any in inconsistency okay then their respective act will apply as far as both are going in the same direction okay the companies act will apply to these sectors the, the companies in these sectors also but just in case there is any inconsistency then their respective act will apply so the insurance companies are governed by the irda act or the insurance act so these are my keywords insurance companies are governed by the insurance act and the irda act uh, banking companies they are governed by the banking regulation and we can use some uh, different ink also if it is available with you. So we will highlight Insurance Act, IRDA. We will highlight Banking Regulation Act. We will highlight that electricity companies are governed by Electricity Act. You need not memorize the years. Just write Electricity Act and that is fine for exam. Any other company which is governed by any special act. So each of these companies, they are governed by their own special acts. Body corporate, which will include uh, uh, any body corporate as notified by the central government. So we have examples like FCI, NHAI. So they are body corporates which are notified by the government that the act will apply to them also. But as I already informed to you, if there is any inconsistency, okay, so let us highlight those words also. If there is some inconsistency uh, in the provisions of the act by which the company is governed, then the provisions of the respective act by which it is governed and regulated shall apply. So can I write it in this manner? In case of inconsistency between what the companies act and the regulatory act, then what will prevail? The act by which that company is regulated, that act will prevail. Okay, so the respective, the provisions of the respective act will prevail. Now, just by reading this, 
i will be able to write it in my own words if there is any inconsistency then the regulation will the provisions of the regulatory act the respective act that will prevail what is a body corporate we will discuss that in section 2 clause 11 now the definitions are given under section 2 let us discuss the various definitions so we have the first clause clause 1 which defines abridged prospectus now what is the meaning of the word abridged prospectus abridged means it's a summary version of prospectus it does not contain all the provisions of a prospectus see even today uh, if you get a prospectus from the college do you read the entire prospectus no we only read what is important to us so here we have given only the important provision so this is a summary okay this is like a summary version so can i say from this no don't write summary in the exam okay this is just to help you to remember the keywords because it is summary it is not a final version it is not a complete version can i say it is like a memorandum you must have prepared the memorandum account yes so it means that is a half baked it has half information it's like kacha bakka. so in this case the first keyword is that it is a memorandum so this is my first keyword this will also help you to these keywords will help you to remember the definition so it is a memorandum all right what is my next keyword but it contains such salient features of a prospectus so can i say this is the second requirement that even though it is a summary version it contains such salient features who has prescribed those salient features as may be prescribed by sebi so we will write down as may be prescribed by sebi so this is the third point that i need to remember okay this is the third part of the definition now let's let's try to frame and understand the definition by joining these three concepts it is a memorandum containing such salient features of a prospectus as may be specified by sebi so because i highlighted those three keywords i am able to recall the concept and i am also able to frame the definition as it is again see i am also teaching you how to use these keywords to frame the answer and the sentence so it means a memorandum containing such salient features of a prospectus as may be prescribed by or specified by sebi can we write sebi in the exam if it is a definition i would not advise you other places yes you may write next we have the definition of accounting standard and i don't think that this will be asked in the exam now let us go on asking ourselves questions so that we are able to you know understand the definition learn it and also recall it what are accounting standards these are standards of accounting so this is my first keyword what are these these are standards of accounting it may be an addendum there too addendum means addition okay it is for whom it is for companies or class of companies as referred in section 133 so this is the first part it is standards of accounting second part it is for companies and class of companies third part referred to in section 133 now let's try to learn this it means what is what are accounting standards it means standards of accounting or any addendum thereto for companies or class of companies as referred in section 133 it is easy for me to remember now section 133 says that central government will prescribe the accounting standards okay now icai will recommend the accounting standards to nfra NFRA will then examine them and recommend them to central government. So the central government will prescribe the accounting standards in consultation with NFRA that was written in section 133. So what are the keywords? Now, who is the ultimate authority prescribing the accounting standards? It's the central government. So what will the central government do? The central government will prescribe. What will it prescribe? The accounting standards or the addendum now who recommends these accounting standards they are recommended by icai who will the central government consult while um, recommend while prescribing the accounting standards it will be nfra so can i say this is one and two and three things which i need to remember these are the three authorities let us now try to learn it the central government shall prescribe what the accounting standards and the addendum thereto these are recommended by icai and central government will then prescribe them in consultation with nfra so the flow which i have given will help you to remember we can also add a few things over here like the nfra will examine and recommend 
okay so this is how we will remember even without going through the provision so ICI will recommend NFRA will examine and then recommend it to us to the central government central government will prescribe you can also write it in your own words next uh, before the formation of NFRA ICAI would prescribe the accounting standards to NACAS which is nothing but National Advisory Committee on Accounting Standards and then uh, NACAS would go through those accounting standards, examine them and recommend them to the central government. So this was the procedure which was followed before NFRA but now the NFRA's composition has been fixed. So I don't think that this part of the definition has any relevance now. Okay, let's go to clause 3. Okay, let's go to clause 3. It includes, sorry, it defines alter or alteration. Like you must have studied alteration of memorandum, alteration of articles. Now, what exactly is meant by alteration? A, O, S. A, O, S. A is addition. O is omission. S is substitution. Substitution means replacement. Okay. A, O, S. Or, or addition, uh, substitution. Sorry, addition, omission, substitution. Okay. A, O, S. Addition, omission, substitution. Appellate tribunal is not there in your syllabus. Now, what is the meaning of articles as defined in clause 5? Articles means articles of the company which were originally framed. Can I say this was at the time of incorporation? Okay. Or it is altered from time to time. So, the key word is altered. So, it means originally framed, altered or it is applied. Okay. The key word is applied in pursuance of this act or any previous company law. This also includes the model articles. Okay, which were applied. Okay, so if your articles are silent, we automatically apply the model articles. If you don't have the articles, we automatically apply the model articles given in Schedule 1. So, what are the three keywords? Articles include originally framed or altered from time to time or they were applied in pursuance of uh, any provisions of this act or any previous company law. So, can I say it was originally framed? That is my keyword. So, originally framed which was altered, this is writing practice and which was applied in pursuance of either this act or any previous company law. So it's very easy to remember this way. Next, we have a very important definition of an associate company, section 2, clause 6. This clause is very important for exam. It can be asked in the exam, section 2, clause 6. Now, associate company in relation to another company. Now, let's say for example, X Limited, it owns either 20% or more than 20%. So, can I say more than or equal to 20%? Yes. So, if X Limited owns, let's say, 30% of the total voting power, it's not share capital, it's the total voting power of A Limited, then in this case, A Limited is the associate of X Limited. So, in relation to another company, it means a company in which that other company has significant influence. The keywords over here are significant influence. It is not a subsidiary. The second is it is not a subsidiary. It includes a joint venture company. Okay, so these are the three keywords which, I, which have to be present in your answer. The first keyword is it has significant influence. It is not a subsidiary, but it includes a joint venture company. Because these words are mentioned in the definition, the next uh, logical way is to define them. Okay, so what is the meaning of significant influence? Significant influence means control of at least 20%. At least 20% means 20 or more than 20% of the total voting power or control. Now, what are the keywords over here? You have to write total voting power or control of or participation in the business decision. So, we have 20% or more of the total voting power or control of or participation in the business decision. So, let's say that X, uh, X Limited owns more than 30% of A Limited, then A Limited is its associate. 20 or more till 50% will be considered as associate company. More than 50%, let's, can I say, as soon as it is 51%, then it will become a subsidiary. It will no longer remain an associate. So, till 50%, it is associate. 51% will make that company a subsidiary company. Joint venture, it means a joint arrangement, okay? Like Vistara, it is a joint venture company between Tata and Singapore Airlines, the investing company. So, joint venture, it means a joint arrangement of what? Having parties having joint control over the net assets of the arrangement. So, these are the keywords. Now, 
this is very important for exam that the shares which you hold in fiduciary capacity will not be considered while calculating or determining the relation of either holding subsidiary or associate company now this is a very this is a common point between associate company and holding subsidiary company okay fiduciary capacity it means <coughs> you are holding shares in trust confidence in good faith for some other person so let's say for example that a is holding shares in c but in fiduciary capacity for b okay for the benefit of b so in this case while determining whether c is the associate of a we will not consider the shares held by a in the in the capacity or or, or in fiduciary capacity so your a is holding the shares as a trustee we don't feel that a will be a, will be able to exercise any significant influence on c with respect to these shares yes but there may be uh, an associate or a holding subsidiary relation between b and c okay but not between a this these shares will not be will not be considered while calculating to determine or for determining the relation between a and c you are only holding it for the benefit of some other person you are not considered as the owner of those shares okay next we have the definition of accounting stand uh, auditing standards i don't think this will be asked in the exam auditing standards what will it include okay it means what the standards of auditing or any addition there to this was very similar to accounting standards they are standards of accounting here we have auditing standards they are standards of auditing or maybe any addition there to for companies or class of companies referred in section 143 subsection 10 now the central government the format is the same the icai institute of chartered accountants of india will recommend the auditing standards to nfra and nfra will examine those accounting standards uh, auditing standards and they will recommend it to the central government but prior to the con constitution of nfra the auditing standards recommended by icai were prescribed by the central government so in this case the key words over here are icai recommendation of nfra and central government so these are the three authorities and the three keywords then we have the meaning of authorized capital or the nominal capital as you are already aware this is the maximum amount of the capital that the company can raise if you want to raise beyond this then you will have to alter the capital clause so the stamp duty is also payable on the amount of authorized capital so we will highlight the word maximum this is the maximum amount of share capital that the company can raise beyond which it will have to alter the capital clause in the memorandum banking company is not defined uh, it is not applicable for your syllabus board of directors or board very interesting definition in relation to a company so it means we are defining board in relation to a company because there can be board as far as the uh, higher secondary education is concerned it can be board of film certification we are not discussing about board of um, of film certification or board of higher secondary education what we are defining is with relation to a company so in relation to a company what is board it is a collective body of the directors of company so not just one director but it is a collective body of the directors of a company how will you remember this what is it it is a collective body of what of directors directors of the company so how will we remember it it is a collective body of directors of the company so these are the three key words body corporate or corporation the word corporation is derived from the latin word corpus which means body okay now what is the meaning of a body corporate it it includes it includes a company incorporated outside india it means the companies which are incorporated in india are also considered as body corporates but it also includes companies which are incorporated outside india so can i say that body corporate is a wider term than a company see company means the companies which are incorporated in india they have a registered office in india but body corporate is a very wide term it not only includes companies which are incorporated in india in india but it also includes companies which are incorporated outside india i had done a detailed video 
highlighting the difference between body corporate and company i'm leaving a link of that video please go and watch that video it covers the entire concept with examples i have discussed co body corporate and corporation uh, differentiated with the, with company in that video so do go and watch that video it does not include a cooperative society or any other body corporate not being a company defined in this act as notified by the central government will this definition be asked in the exam i don't think that they will ask you to define a body corporate next we have book paper book or paper now it includes we will highlight books of accounts deeds vouchers writings documents minutes registers ma'am it is a lot to remember we won't remember what is the mnemonic for this so please write the mnemonic b d square you write a v add another v it becomes a w inverse it it becomes m okay so b d write a v write uh, add one more v to that it becomes w and then you inverse it it becomes an m now b is for books of accounts b is for sorry b is for books of accounts d is for deeds d is for documents v is for vouchers uh, w is for writings m is for minutes okay so it includes books of accounts deeds documents vouchers writing and minutes so that is how we will remember this so all this is considered you maintain it either in physical form or electronic form we don't care but these are included in the definition of book and paper book or paper it includes deeds documents uh, registers books of accounts vouchers etc next what is the definition of books of accounts and what are the key words that will help you to remember the definition the key words are money received so i will write over here money received money expended this is how i used to make notes money received money expended means money spent by the company sales purchase asset liability cost so sales purchase asset liability cost certain companies are also required to maintain cost records under section 148 we are going to study that later on also so there are certain companies specified by the central government who have to maintain cost records so money received money spent say uh, you are making a record for sales purchase of goods or services asset liability and it also includes any item of cost records that you need to maintain then we have the definition of branch office not important for exam called up capital it means it has been called for payment will not be asked in the exam charge yes charge is very important along with the clause number so charge is defined under section 2 clause 16 let us highlight the keywords now it includes interest or lien so this is the first part of the definition it includes interest or lien created on what created on the property or assets of of the company undertaking or both how as a security and it includes a mortgage so what is it it is interest or lien it is created on property or assets of the of the company undertaking or both how it is created as security and it includes a mortgage so this is how you will remember what is it it is interest or lien created on property or assets of company undertaking both how as a security and it includes a mortgage it's easy to remember yes now charge is nothing but security so let's say for example that the company gave its asset let's say plant machinery building they gave its asset to the bank as security in exchange for loan so this asset is nothing but a charge it is a security so charge is nothing but a security a charge is created on the assets of the company what if the bank doesn't uh, is not able to recover the loan from the company company is not repaying the loan then the bank will sell the asset to recover its money chartered accountant not important chief executive officer is one who has been designated as such but as chief financial officer is one who has been appointed as such not important for exam company we have already defined it means incorporated under so what were the uh, keywords incorporated under this act or any previous company law company limited by guarantee so what is the keyword over here it is the amount which the members have promised to contribute at the time of winding up so winding up is my keyword in the definition so this is a company which is generally a non profit organization they don't require money during the lifetime but they want the members to contribute something at the time of winding up so each member will promise that i will give 10000 b says i will give 20000 c says i will give 30000 so this amount we can recover them from from them at the time of winding up but i may have share capital also so in that case the liability will be two one is the unpaid amount on the shares and second will be the amount of guarantee 
company limited by shares in this the liability is limited to the amount unpaid on shares it is very simple so if my face value of share is let's say 100 rupees i have paid 75 rupees it means 25 is the unpaid capital okay so my liability is limited <clears throat> only to the amount unpaid what if i have paid the entire face value then i don't have to pay anything i will not pay anything beyond the face value that is my liability it is a company limited by shares the company uh, the members liability is limited by the amount unpaid on shares liquidator secretary that is not there in your syllabus now who is a contributory let's say for example that the company has face value 100 75 rupees has been called up and it has also been paid by members now the unpaid is 25 now this 25 rupees can be called either during the lifetime of the company any time during the lifetime it can also be called at the time of winding up now in case the members okay in case the members pay this amount during the lifetime of the company they are paying in the capacity of a member they are called as a member but if they are paying this 25 000, 25 rupees at the time of winding up then they are known as contributories it is just a term which is used for them okay this also includes a person holding fully paid up shares in the company he will also be liable as a contributory now see i agree that if he has full if he is holding fully paid up shares he has no liability attached it is only a term which is given to him he is a contributory although we will not recover anything from him because he has already paid the entire face value of shares so only thing is that he will be called as a contributory so at the time of winding up if we recover that amount then we are then that person who is paying the amount is known as a contributory what is the meaning of control now this concept is very relevant for holding and subsidiary so you can write down it is relevant for holding and subsidiary it's an inclusive definition okay it is not defining the word properly it is an inclusive definition it shall include how to remember this d m s okay so d m s now d stands for directors m stands for management s stands for shareholding shareholders agreement voting agreements anything related to shares okay now d m s now what is the meaning of control nothing from the point of view of holding and subsidiary company now h company is the holding of s limited now how will you define a holding company holding company means a company if that is if that other company is my subsidiary so when does s become a subsidiary if h holds more than 50 percent so can i say more than 50 percent it means 51 percent or more of the voting power in s or if h has control over the board of directors of a control means i can either appoint or remove all or majority directors of s at my own discretion so in that case h will be considered as a holding company the word used over there is control h can control the composition of the board of directors what is the meaning of control control means i have the right to appoint majority of the directors without the consent of any other person and i am controlling that other company so that is the meaning of control if you can control the directors indirectly you can control the company so i also have the it includes the uh, it, it includes control of the management or the policy decisions either individually or together concert means together it includes uh, by virtue of shareholding shareholders agreement or voting now it is worth noting that why will someone give you the control why will someone give you the right to appoint majority of directors it is mentioned in the shareholders agreement it is mentioned because of my shareholding i own most of the shares of that company so automatically i have the right to appoint the directors or it is a voting agreement there is some kind of arrangement because of which i have been given this right okay debenture yes very interesting definition the section the uh, clause number is important clause is important debenture again it's an inclusive definition it is not defining the meaning of uh, debenture but it is uh, only explaining what is included in the term debenture the keys uh, how to remember this s b i s is for it includes debenture stock i'll highlight that for you it includes debenture stock 
bond any other instrument evidencing a debt showing a debt so debenture is nothing but loan taken by the company how is it defined it includes debenture stock bonds any other instrument evidencing that is showing a debt whether secured whether constituting a charge on the assets of the company or not whether secured or not so whether constituting a charge on the assets of the company or not it means it can be either secured or unsecured but these instruments shall not be considered as debenture so instruments refer in chapter 3d of the reserve bank of india act and any such instrument as may be prescribed by the central government ma'am do we need to write all this in the exam yes unfortunately this is a very technical way of remembering but you don't have any other way you cannot write it in your own words all that i can do is explain this to you but you have to memorize this definition as it is now what is included in chapter 3d of the rbi act so it includes derivative instruments okay it includes derivative instruments it includes repo reverse repo money market instruments so these are not considered forwards options swaps these are not considered as debentures deposit yes clause 31 deposit means let us highlight it includes receipt of money by way of deposit loan in any other form but it does not include does not include such categories of amount as may be prescribed where where is it prescribed it is prescribed in rule 2 of the companies acceptance of deposit rules 2014 so rule 2 it mentions the amounts which shall not be considered as deposit okay so it receives a receipt of by way of money deposit loan in any other form so it includes any money which you have received by way of deposit loan or in any other form uh, then we have director it means he is a director appointed to the board of a company we are only talking about the director with respect to or in relation to a company and no other organization so director who is appointed to the board of the company now very interesting definition given under clause 35 dividend it simply says that dividend includes interim dividend it is not defining dividend it only says that it includes interim dividend it means that the provisions applicable to final dividend will apply to interim dividend also that is the meaning of this definition document yes let us study what is the meaning of the word document what is a document so what summons notice requisition order declaration form register this is my first part of the definition whether it is issued sent kept maintained okay maintained why 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 because it was a requirement of this act or any other law for the time being in force it may be a requirement of gst law it may be a requirement of income tax law that is why we are maintaining the summons notice declaration form register how are you maintaining it either in paper or electronic form so how so what is it it includes notice requisition document uh, declaration form register what are you doing i am maintaining it why are you maintaining it because it is the requirement of this act or in pursuance of any other law how are you maintaining it either in paper or in electronic form so that is a document okay then we have employee stock option it is nothing but an option given to the employees to subscribe for the shares the securities of the company it is not a compulsion it's just an option to whom is this option given it is an option which is given to we will highlight directors officers employees of either the company holding company subsidiary company or companies what is the option it gives the directors let me highlight this also for you it gives the directors officers or employees the benefit i'm not highlighting this because it is repeated the benefit or the right to purchase or subscribe for the shares of the company when at a future date at a predetermined price so these are my keywords now how to remember this what is it it is just an option so this is the first point it's not a compulsion it's an option now you will find the provisions 
this is just the definition but the provisions are given under section 62 subsection 1 clause b so this we are going to study later also what is it it is just an option given to whom directors officers employees of company holding company subsidiary company what is this option it is the right or the benefit to purchase so let me write it right or the benefit to purchase or subscribe for shares when at a future date how at a predetermined price so let's say for example that you are giving them an option to buy the shares at 100 rupees the market price is let's say 150 rupees okay this is the market price so it is in the money it is beneficial for them to exercise this option because they will buy at 100 rupees they will sell at 150 rupees in the market thus getting a cool profit of 50 rupees per share but what if in the market the price is let's say 50 rupees per share now this will be out of the money it means it is better to buy from the market than to exercise the option and purchase the shares at 100 rupees so it is just an option given to them they can decide depending upon the market price so employee stock option it is nothing but an employee retention technique now how will you define expert expert includes okay it's an inclusive definition engineer valuer chartered accountant company sec company secretary or cost accountant okay so e v c a c s c m a e is for engineer v is for value or c a c s or management accountant anyone who can give a certificate in pursuance of any law for the time being in force so if your law allows you to give a certificate certificate means i have gone through the documents everything is correct you are certifying it you are giving a certificate your law allows you to give a certificate then you can also be termed as an expert so any other person actually widens the scope of this definition so prima facie we have engineer value or chartered accountant company secretary cost accountant because they have the authority to issue a certificate but any other person like a doctor they can also issue a certificate a medical certificate an architect can issue a certificate so if your law allows you to issue a certificate then you are termed as an expert expert was defined for the first time in the companies act 2013 earlier 1956 i did not have any definition then we have the definition of financial statement it is a very simple definition it includes i will make notes the left hand side of the margin it includes balance sheet it includes profit and loss account but i am a company not for profit then it includes income and expenditure account it includes the cash flow statement statement of changes in equity and also explanatory notes but it is important for us to know that in case of one person company small company dormant company the financial statement will not include the cash flow statement it may not include it means it is all right if you don't include it if you want you can prepare it but we won't take any action we will consider that you have already complied with the requirements even if your financial statements do not include a cash flow statement it is one of the privileges given to these companies then what is the meaning of the financial year now if i only mention the word year year generally means a calendar year okay year generally means a calendar year that is from 1st of january to 31st of december but when i say the word financial year financial year it means the year beginning from 1st of april and ending on 31st of march so that is the financial year now in case you are a company which was incorporated between 1st april to 31st of march now let's say 31st of december now let's say for example i am considering 1st april to 31st december 2022 okay so you are a company which was registered between 1st april uh, 2022 to 31st december 2022 any time during this period for you the financial year Okay, for you the financial year will end on 31st march 2023 but if you are i'm writing it below okay if you are a company registered after 1st of january it means after 1st jan 2023 to maybe 31st of jan 31st of march 2023 then for you the year will end on 31st march 2024 okay so if you are a company incorporated anytime during this period 
that is before 31st December of the year for you the financial year will end on 31st March 2023 that is 31st March of the next year but if you are a company incorporated anytime after 1st of Jan then for you the financials will be prepared for the next year that is 31st March 2024 okay provided that okay what is mentioned in the proviso now let's say for example we have pepsico inc okay this is a company which is incorporated outside india it has a subsidiary in india in the name of pepsico india private limited now pepsico inc is following the calendar year Whereas PepsiCo India Private Limited, the subsidiary which is incorporated in India is a company. It is a company under the definition of the Companies Act. It has to follow the financial year that is beginning from 1st April to 31st of March. Now, for the purpose of consolidation, will it be possible for me to consolidate the accounts of both these companies? No. One is following calendar year, other is following the financial year. So if for the ease of doing business, for the ease of consolidation, you want to follow a different year as your financial year, a different period as your financial year, then you can apply to the central government and the central government will allow you to follow any other period or any other, uh, I will say period because they are not even concerned whether now you're following a year or not, whether that period is of 12 months or 15 months. Because they are giving you so much liberty, it doesn't it doesn't matter whether uh, uh, the period that you are following is 12 months or 8 months. We are allowing you to follow any period as the financial uh, year only for the purpose of consolidation. Okay, So for the ease of consolidation, for the ease of showing the picture of the group company as a whole, we are allowing you to follow any period as the financial year. Alright, so this was something about financial year there is a lot actually i had also done a separate detailed video on this i am leaving a link of the video here you can go and watch in that i have explained it uh, along with examples that is a very detailed video actually who has to make an application to the central government this indian company they will have to make an application to the central government and then central government will allow Foreign company, yes, what are the key words in case of foreign company? A foreign company means a company or a body corporate incorporated outside India. So whether your company is domestic company or foreign company depends upon the place of incorporation. If you are incorporated outside India, you are a foreign company having business in India. Okay, so if you are a, a company incorporated outside India, but you have a place of business in India, either through itself or agent, let me highlight, has a place of business in India either by itself through an agent physically or in electronic mode so these are the different parts in which you will break the definition to remember so you have a place of business in india either itself or through agent physically or electronic mode you are conducting business activity in india in any other manner you are considered as a foreign company what if i am a company incorporated outside india i don't have any business in india i am just a body corporate Free reserves, yes, free reserves are those reserves which are available for distribution in the form of dividend. It's a very simple definition. Free means it, it does not have any specific purpose alloc allocated to it. It is available, that money is available for distribution in the form of dividend, but it does not include unrealized gains, notional gain, revaluation of asset. Um, it does not include the change in the carrying amount of asset or liability. Uh, it does not include any surplus in the profit and loss account, etc. Now, these do not represent actual gain. See, unrealized gain uh, or you have notional gain, this does not represent actual profit. Suppose you have bought shares at 100 rupees and tomorrow the price increases to 120 rupees. 20 rupees is your unrealized gain because you have not yet sold the shares. You have not realized that gain. It is unrealized. That is not considered as free reserve. You cannot distribute that as dividend. Government company, yes, important for exam. Government company means a company in which at least 51% of the paid up share capital. But if your company has issued DVR, then instead of the paid up share capital, you will use the term voting power. So if more than 51% of the paid up share capital or voting power as the case may be, is held either by the central government or by the state government or by central government and one or more state governments, then you are considered as a uh, government company. The subsidiary, of a government company is also considered as a government company. What does it mean? It means that all the provisions of a government company will apply to that subsidiary also. Holding company, I am holding if you are my subsidiary, very important definition for exam. 
this has to be uh, mentioned uh, many times in uh, case based question and we are going to discuss this in detail in the next chapter also when i study when i uh, go through the types of companies for you then issued capital means it is issued from time to time for subscription forget it key managerial personnel important even the clause is important for exam clause 51 now who is a key managerial personnel so it is a very easy matlab you have to learn this definition you can't like write it in your own words there is no explanation also for it key managerial personnel will include let's make down let's take down notes it will include ceo managing director manager company secretary whole time director chief financial officer officer not one level below the director so let's say for example i have an assistant director just one level below the director that will be considered as kmp i won't go below that any other officer but as of now no other officer has been prescribed listed company is a detailed concept i will discuss next time let us now differentiate between manager and managing director again i had done a detailed video on manager and managing director so now go and watch that video i'm leaving a link over here i'll also leave a link of all the other videos in my description box so just go through those other videos it will give you a detailed explanation of those concepts now who is a manager see manager is an individual he may be a director may not be a director he is an individual let's highlight he is an individual but to be a managing director you have to be a director okay so he means a director now let's go on highlighting the difference also and though they will be the characteristics of the company it means an individual subject to the superintendence control direction of the board of directors so can i say that manager is under the supervision of the board of directors whereas a managing director is not under the supervision of board of directors he is the director he has the he is by virtue of either articles of the company or an agreement with the company or a resolution passed uh, or by its board of uh, either in the general meeting or by the board of directors what rights do they have okay they have the right to manage either whole or substantially whole of the affairs of the company so they either manage the entire affairs of the company or substantial affairs of the company here he is entrusted with substantial powers of management of the affairs of the company ma'am both are given substantial powers is it possible for us to have both manager as well as managing director in the company no you can have either manager or managing director you cannot have both you cannot have two two managers also in the company now see i am not talking about the manager means sales manager product manager i am not talking about those there can be multiple such managers i am talking about someone who has the supreme authority to manage substantially either the whole or substantially it means almost the whole of the company i'm talking about that person so you can have either manager or managing director if you have a manager you can have only one manager and not multiple managers how can you give substantial or whole powers to two people it includes a director so it means manager may or may not be a director okay he may or may not be a director but managing director has to compulsorily be the director of the company only then he can be a managing director he also uh, has substantial powers and it includes a director it includes a director occupying the position of the managing director by whatever name called so if you are a person who is designated who is who is occupying the position okay occupying the position you are designated as a managing director then you are a managing director but if you are not designated as a managing director however you by a resolution have the substantial powers of management of the company then you may be considered as a managing director here it includes a director and any person occupying the position of a manager so here we are designated him as a manager he is a manager but even if we have not designated him then he may be a director having substantial powers he may be termed as a manager now this also explains that if suppose you have the power to affix the common seal okay if you have the power to sign if you have the power to draw endorse negotiable instrument to sign a certificate of share 
you don't have substantial power these are routine administrative works i always thought that if i had the power to sign a check that it is a very substantial and very important power hello it's just an administrative duty if you are handling these things doesn't mean that you will become a manager these are not substantial powers these are not these are just routine regular administrative powers who is termed as a member of the company so it includes the subscribers to the memorandum subscribers are persons who sign the memorandum and agree to purchase the number of shares mentioned against their name so in case of memorandum you will find a table in the memorandum there we will write names like a b and c he has promised to purchase 1000 shares he has promised to purchase 10000 shares 20000 shares these people their names are mentioned in the memorandum that they have agreed they have not yet got that money but they have agreed that they will bring in that much money they are known as subscribers they are the first members of the company they are liable even if no allotments have been made to them then any other person who has agreed in writing because for allotment you have to apply in writing only oral application will not make you a member any person whose name is entered as a beneficial owner in the records of depository do you really think that listed companies or the companies that have lakhs of shareholders have the time to update the register every day no so the records maintained by the depository are considered as if it is a register of members of the company if your name is mentioned as a beneficial owner in the records of the depository then you are considered as member of the company memorandum yes memorandum clause 56 it means the memorandum which is originally framed at the time of incorporation or which is altered from time to time it means later this is very similar to the definition of articles of association correct net worth not at all important for example but it includes paid up share capital you can write it it includes reserves it includes the credit balance in PNL account reduce the debit balance in PNL account, but it will also not include the accumulated losses. You have to reduce the deferred expenditure. You have to reduce the miscellaneous expenditure to the extent not written off. It does not include reserves created out of revaluation of assets, right back of depreciation amalgamation because this does not represent actual reserve. It does not represent actual money officer yes officer it includes okay again officer is an inclusive definition it includes a director a manager kmp any person in accordance with whose directions or instructions the board of the directors are accustomed to act so it includes let's say for example we'll just go on writing it includes director it includes manager it includes kmp any other person in accordance with whose directions instructions the board or any of the directors are accustomed to act it will not include a person who is giving uh, advice in professional capacity only but any other person uh, on whose consultation the board or any director is accustomed to act that person is also considered as officer of the company now it is important to define officer because the next term defined is officer in default any person who knowingly uh, commits any act which is against the company against the law then that person is known as officer in default for the purpose of this pro provision uh, in the act it means the following persons are considered as officers in default so we have the whole time director key managerial personnel but i don't have any kmp then in that case any person who is designated or specified by the board in this behalf that in case something goes wrong in the company this person will be considered as the officer in default and if none are specified by the board then all the directors Okay, all the directors, if no director has been specified, will be considered as officer in default. So, up till now, we know that the whole time director, the KMP, and if no KMP is, uh, the company does not have any key KMP, then such director or directors as may be specified by the board, and if no one is specified, then the, then all the directors will be considered as officer in default. Any person, let us go on highlighting the keywords, any person who under the immediate authority of the board or KMP is charged with the responsibility including, okay, charged with the responsibility including maintenance, filing, distribution of accounts, records and who actively, this is very important, who actively participates in or he knowingly permits or he knowingly fails to take active steps when he knows about the default, that person is also considered as officer in default. Let us break this and understand. 
एनी पर्सन हु अंडर द इमीजिएट अथॉरिटी ऑफ द बोर्ड सो एनी पर्सन हु इज रिपोर्टिंग और आंसरेबल टू द बोर्ड और द के एम पी एंड हु इज गिविन द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ मेंटेनेंस फाइलिंग डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ अकाउंट्स और रिकॉर्ड दैट पर्सन नोज दैट देर इज सम डिफॉल्ट हैपनिंग और दैट पर्सन वॉज इन्वॉल्व इन दैट डिफॉल्ट दैट पर्सन डिड नॉट टेक एनी स्टेप्स इन स्टॉपिंग दैट डिफॉल्ट विल बी कंसिडर्ड एज ऑफिसर इन डिफॉल्ट any person in accordance with whose advice directions instructions the board of directors is accustomed to act other than the person who gives the advice in a professional capacity so i always take the advice direction or instructions um, of that person the board of directors will always consult that person before taking decision then that person will also be considered as officer in default in case something goes wrong in the company every director in respect of let us highlight the keywords every director in respect of the contravention who is aware aware means he has knowledge he is aware of the contravention because he himself was participating over there he himself okay now we are talking about the director earlier we were talking about any person okay now we are talking about director any director who was aware because he himself was a was a party to that proceeding he was participating he did not object or where the contravention took place with his consent or connivance he was a party he gave his consent then that director will also be considered as officer in default uh, in respect this is very interesting point in respect of the issue or transfer of shares the share transfer agent registrars and merchant now this is only when shares or transfer the issue or transfer of shares is concerned and in no other case will they be held liable only when issue of shares or transfer of shares is concerned then such share transfer agents or registrars or merchant bankers will also be considered as officer in default as far as this is concerned okay issue or transfer of share is concerned then we have the concept of ordinary or special resolution now ordinary resolution is a resolution to pass you require that people who vote in favor should be more than the people who vote against the resolution it means more than 50% of the persons who are voting at the meeting should vote in favor of the resolution uh, so can i say that the votes in favor of the resolution should be more than the votes against the resolution or it should be more than 50 persons what if it is exact 50 percent then in that case the ordinary resolution will not be passed in case of special resolution we require that the votes in favor should be three times the votes against the resolution should be more than or equal to three times the votes against the resolution so it is not compulsory that everyone who attends the meeting will vote at the meeting but people who vote at the meeting should uh uh three times uh, the votes cast against the uh, meeting should be in favor of the uh, favor of the resolution only then a special resolution will be passed or in other words you can say that 3/4 of the votes should be in favor or 75% of the votes should be in favor of the resolution now this will be only with respect to the people who are actually voting at the meeting so the votes cast in favor should be three times the votes cast against the resolution paid up capital it means the capital which is received by the company it includes any amount which is credited as paid up but it does not include okay does not include any amount which is uh, any other amount like securities premium other amount will include securities premium that is recorded separately as a reserve it is not included in the paid up capital of the company now what is the meaning of postal ballot it is a method of voting it includes voting by post or through electronic mode this we will discuss in chapter 7 management and administration then we have a promoter now the definition is given under section 2 clause 69 this is very very important for exam you have to by heart the definition it is asked very frequently in the exam now the definition of promoter does not describe the work of the promoter it only identifies okay it merely identifies the promoter who should be held responsible in case something goes wrong in the company so how will i know who is a promoter let us highlight the keywords named as such in the prospectus so if your name is written as a promoter you are a promoter your name is written in the prospectus you are a promoter you are identified by the company in the annual return filed under section 92 so this is a compulsory filing it's a compliance requirement by every company your name is written as a promoter you are considered as a promoter any person who has underlined control over the affairs of the company either directly indirectly whether as a shareholder director or otherwise you are controlling the affairs of the company you are a promoter 
in accordance with whose advice direction instruction the board of the the board of directors they are accustomed to act so the board does not move ahead without his advice without his consultation he is considered as the promoter but this uh, uh, will not include the persons who are acting merely in professional capacity so this will include chartered accountant company secretary it will include a banker it will include a solicitor they will not be regarded as promoter but yes what if they act beyond their professional capacity then in that case they may be regarded as promoter so if somebody is helping me incorporate a company because that is the work which is done by the company secretary or a chartered accountant then that person is not a promoter but if he arranges for capital or goes beyond his professional capacity then he may be regarded as a promoter prospectus yes this is a means of raising finance through the public prospectus it is a document which is described or issued as a prospectus so i am mentioning on that document that it is a prospectus then it will be considered as a prospectus but it also includes types red herring prospectus shelf prospectus any notice circular advertisement document inviting offers from the public this is nothing but a deemed prospectus section 25 okay so in this case uh, what is included anything which is described as a prospectus it includes a red herring prospectus it includes a shelf prospectus or a deemed prospectus you are inviting subscriptions from the public issuing of prospectus is compulsory in case of public offer of securities then what is a public company easy definition it is a company which is not a private company very simple it has paid up capital as may be prescribed nothing has been prescribed as of now a private subsidiary of a public company will also be considered as a public company so i have a public company let's say x limited it has a private company a private limited as a subsidiary okay now this subsidiary although it is private it will be considered as if it is a deemed public company does it need to change the name remove the word private does it need to alter the um, articles and remove those three restrictions does it need to restrict the number of members to 200 only uh, sorry does it need to remove those uh, restrictions does it need to alter the name remove the word private it need not do anything it can continue to remain private by its articles but only thing is that the privileges of a private company will not be available all the provisions of a public company shall apply then we have register of company it is nothing but a record which is maintained by the registrar either on paper or in electronic mode so it is nothing but a record maintained by the registrar who is a registrar see registrar means either a registrar but it also includes additional registrar these are all uh, different the hierarchy of registrar additional joint deputy assistant registrar so whenever we use the word registrar doesn't mean the ultimate supreme authority it also includes anyone additional joint deputy because see the work is delegated no one person cannot handle that the main registrar cannot handle it so it is delegated to additional registrar joint registrar deputy assistant registrar that is also considered as registrar what is they do what do they do they have the duty of registering the companies and discharging various functions so can i say they help in incorporation of the company and also running of existing company so registrar is some person who is aware of whatever is happening in the company next we have the definition of related party very very important but i don't think it will be asked in the exam however you are expected to be aware now the words that i am highlighting they are considered as the related party so i am a company think from the point of view of a company so if i am a company i am in the center then the director of the company i will highlight the director or his relative is the related party of the company so the director or relative is the related party any key managerial personnel or his relative is the related party of the company a firm in which the director manager or relative of the company is a partner then that firm is considered as the related party of the company a private company will be the related party if my company's manager director or relative is the member or director of that private company a public company so that public company will be my related part will be the related party of the company in which director manager is either a director and he holds along with his relative more than 2% of the paid up capital even if the director on his own holds more than 2% then also that public company will be considered as the related party so if a director or a manager either on their own or together with their relative holds more than 2% of the paid up capital of that public company then that public company will be considered as the related party any body corporate 
whose board of directors managing director manager is accustomed to act okay that body corporate whose board of directors manager managing director is accustomed to act in accordance with the advice direction instructions of a director or manager of the company so that body corporate whose board of directors act according to the instruction or direction of my director then that body corporate is considered as my relative but here yes that instruction if it is given in professional capacity it will not be considered any person on whose advice direction instructions a director or manager of the company is accustomed to act then that other person will be considered as our related parties because my board of direct my director my manager is accustomed to act as per his consultant uh, advice direction instruction any body corporate okay which is holding subsidiary or associate of the company so let's say that i am a company my holding company my subsidiary my associate these are related party a subsidiary of a holding to which it is a subsidiary seems confusing but it is very simple i have a company with two subsidiaries s1 and s2 so s1 and company they are related party s2 and company are related party S one and S two are related party. So for a company holding subsidiary associate are related party. For a company subsidiary is related party and subsidiary subsidiary are also related party of each other. An investing company or venturer of a company. Where should I write? Now X has invested more than twenty percent of the voting power in Y Limited. Okay, X Limited has invested more than twenty percent. So can I say that Y is an associate company? Okay, so and X is the investing company. So in this case, X is the related party of Y Limited, investing company. In my example, X Limited, or a venture like joint venture, yes, or a venture of the company. will be considered as related party so here the investing company x will be considered as the related party of y limited next we have the concept of remuneration not very important money or equivalent okay then we have share share means a share in the share capital share capital of the company it includes stock stock is nothing but aggregation of share we are going to discuss that later small company i am again keeping on hold because there was an amendment we will discuss it in detail subscribe capital means which is subscribed by the members they have accepted to subscribe that is they have agreed to purchase those shares subsidiary holding we will discuss in detail sweat equity yes meri mehnat ka paisa okay so i have worked very hard for the company you don't have money to reward me give me shares instead on my instagram handle i had made a video explaining the concept of sweat equity shares go and watch that video my instagram uh, is in my name that is ca preeti agarwal you can find it easily link is also given in the description so do follow me on instagram for concept based engaging and interesting videos okay so what is sweat equity now these are the equity shares okay it is only equity which are issued okay the equity is the keyword which are issued by the company to the directors employees either at a discount or for consideration other than cash why are we giving them for providing know how making available rights in the nature of i am not highlighting all that rights in the nature of intellectual property rights value addition by whatever name called so can i break it into different parts what are these these are equity shares given to whom given to directors employees how are they given they are given either at a discount or for consideration other than cash why are they given because they have provided us with technical know how rights in the nature of intellectual property or value addition why aren't we giving them money i don't have money so instead of offering them money i'm giving them shares either i'm giving them at discount or for consideration other than other than cash if you are giving at discount then won't section 53 uh, uh, which says that you cannot issue shares at discount it is void won't that be attracted no this is an exception you can give them for consideration other than cash it means they have given you technical know how they have helped you to establish factories in india they have Uh, made available patents value additions in exchange for that you are giving them shares so you don't have money to reward them so you are giving them shares instead that is sweat equity we are going to study this in section 54 later total voting power if each and every member of the company comes and attends the meeting and votes at the meeting then what is the total voting power so it means we will highlight the keywords over here 
total number of votes which are cast if if is the key word because we are assuming if all the members uh, or their proxies who have the right to vote they come and attend the meeting and they cast their vote because they, it happens sometimes that people come but they don't vote at the meeting but what if each and every member comes and he votes at the meeting then that is the total voting power tribunal it is the national company law tribunal nclt it is a quasi judicial body okay it is a quasi judicial body it is just like the court it listens to the corporate matters instead of going to the regular courts and courts and wasting their time go to nclt you can also appeal in the nclt appellate tribunal turnover not very important but please highlight the keyword it is the gross amount okay it is the gross amount of revenue which is recognized in the profit and loss account from the sale supply distribution of goods or services unlimited liability it means there is no limit not having any limit on the liability of the members there is no limit on the liability voting right this is given only to equity shareholder because preference shareholders have limited voting rights okay so voting rights means the right of a member this is the equity shareholder having the right to vote in any meeting or by means of postal ballot you can also attend the meeting and vote or you can send your uh, vote by post that is known as voting by postal ballot we are going to study uh, that in chapter 7 it is a method of voting so you can attend uh, vote in any meeting of the company that is you can go physically and attend or you can vote by means of postal ballot you can send that vote through post so that is considered as the voting right okay so that this is only for equity shareholders when we consider total share capital there we include equity plus convertible preference shares capital but voting right we are talking only about the equity shareholders not preference shareholders because they don't have un, uh, they don't have absolute voting power they have restricted voting power they can only vote on resolutions which concern them as preference shareholders okay so i think with that yes we have come to an end of our uh, quick rapid and uh, all the keywords were highlighted i uh, also gave you tricks on how to remember those provisions how to break these definitions and highlight the lecture was a little fast considering that you don't have much time but i'm very sure you were able to follow you can get this book on my website capreetiagrawal.com we also have lectures fast track lectures for may 23 and november 23 we have regular lectures Uh, there are new recordings we are covering the entire syllabus all this is covered in detail again we also highlight the keywords over there i make you write down lot of notes which will help you to recall the concept and also uh, help you one day uh, before the exam for revision so a very different method is used for uh, my regular lectures we not only discuss the theory but also the question answers module questions mcqs compiler questions everything is discussed in the lecture itself All right students I won't take a lot of time I'll see you in the next lecture where we will discuss types of companies also we will highlight the keywords subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get notification for the next video and please give a thumbs up before ending the session